<laughs> hey y'all, um, welcome to the Draw Your Pet tutorial with me, um, Haley from Home. So I'm just going to give a few moments, like maybe 30 seconds to a minute, for all y'all to get your, um, your materials together. So what you'll need tonight is a few pieces of paper and you'll want a pencil and um, if you have like a ink drawing pen if you like to use that but definitely get your pink eraser I know we all have them and if you have a pencil sharpener so try to get those organized and together if you don't already have them and then the most important part is to get the picture of your pet so I know that this might have been hard for y'all to pick the pet to draw if you're like me and you have two cats um, well the decision actually wasn't really hard because y'all know how much I'm obsessed with Jean-Pierre um, and I may or may not be wearing a Jean-Pierre t-shirt, but it's like, that just happened. Um, so, my, uh, my cat for tonight is Jean-Pierre, although I do have two cats, Ellie and Jean-Pierre. Ellie likes to um, go to bed early. So, alright babe, we're gonna kind of get set up on the, on the materials here. So, I have my little Jean-Pierre, and um, I like this composition because it's, um, it's spiraling, and it's internal, and he's... The tail's moving in, and it's also a little challenging. I wanted y'all to see what, I find this a little bit challenging, because it's not like a cat sitting, it's not like a dog, or um, something that's a little easier to recognize. I mean, like, we're talking shapes here tonight. So tonight I wanna go over how to draw an animal. Now, if you took my blind contour drawing classes, and if you took my, um, my figure drawing class, I talk a lot about shapes, and Tonight, we're also dealing with shapes. So if you can, everyone, I just want you to go ahead and look at the piece of paper or the iPad or the iPhone that you're drawing from or the animal that you're looking at. And I want you to take your two pointer fingers and thumbs and make a frame. Whether that frame is going to be horizontal or vertical, that's gonna help you decide how to move the image onto a flat surface. So for me, Jean-Pierre, He's on a horizontal frame, and there he is. He's also meowing tonight. So let's go into overall shape. So when I look and when I, Hilti says give her, okay, my twin, okay, Hilti. Hilti just, uh, thank you, Hilti, I love you. I have a twin sister. She says give her a shout out. She um, did not help me name Jean-Pierre. I named him Jean-Pierre. So that's your shout out, Hilti. <laughs> At Hilti B, that's my twin. Um, so, so this, but John Pierre's first name was Trisket, so I renamed him. Um, okay, so I want you to look at the piece of paper, or again, the surface that you're drawing from, and just look, find one place to look at, and see if you can see an overall shape. For me, this overall shape was almost like an apple, a little small at the bottom, a little wide on the edges, and then a little high on the top. So when I go in to draw Jean Pierre, I'm gonna draw an apple shape overall. So let's go ahead and get started. And babe, I moved my um, paper, so let's see if you can still see it. So I want that overall apple shape. Okay, go, just go for the big shape. You're putting your animal onto the surface. I don't want you to worry about any other shape except for this overall shape. Is your, animal, is your dog sitting? Does it look like a, like a construction cone? Um, is your bird, I don't know, perched? You know, Think about overall shape on your piece of paper here. Where does the highest point go? Where does the widest point go? Where does the lowest point go? And so forth. So I have, now I have, I have moved the whole image of Jean-Pierre onto my paper. Here we go. We're gonna start moving into, now we have the big shape, let's go into smaller shapes. So Jean-Pierre, his head, if you cut the paper into a quadrant, that helps, that helps me sometimes if I'm mapping out. Also, if I've had a glass of wine, I won't say if I had or not. <laughs> and his little head is definitely fully in the left frame. So I'm gonna just put a marker for his head right here. It's not a perfect circle. It's an oval and the top and the bottom are kind of flat. Now I'm gonna go to his shoulder blade, which kind of looks a little bit like, um, okay, I'm gonna go a little bit darker so y'all can see here. Okay, let me just go a little bit darker, all right. So I have space for his head, I'm gonna change pencils. I have space for his head right here. It's an oval, okay? I'm not, um, I'm not making it a perfect circle. 
So look at your animal's shape. I know I'm drawing a cat, but is it an oval? Is he looking straight at you, he or she? Start to go into these other shapes. If I'm cutting my piece of paper into quadrants, this little shoulder, Jean-Pierre, is very large in a healthy way, but he's a big boy. Shoulders here, and then you have his back here. It looks like his, I'm just looking at shapes. I see triangles, I see a triangle here. Remember we talked about negative space? What's the negative space from the elbow to the shoulder blade? I see a little paw here. I'm just doing shapes. Nothing I'm doing looks like a cat right now. But what I'm doing is I'm mapping out shapes. There's a little space here, a little space here. And then he's kind of moving into this spiral, which I really like. Again, we're going to talk down the road about sacred geometry, but this is very much a spiral that we've all seen before. So <laughs> if you run into the problem that sometimes I run into and something comes off the edge, it's okay, you can keep it. Um, if you want to move the image down for time, I'm gonna keep it, but you have a lot of time, you can move the image down if you feel like you're kind of running into the corners here. Here's his little foot, here's another arm kind of coming right into the middle. All right, now let's go into more detail. So I'm gonna zoom in on my iPad and I'm looking at his face. What I see is I see a little diamond shape here from his forehead, to his cheek, to his jaw, and then another kind of diamond shape here. So let's start to make those shapes. I want to have his little mouth here. I see a jaw that kind of comes up, another line, and then I'm going to go to the tip of his nose. So I'm going to put his nose right here. And what I like about what I'm obsessed about Jean-Pierre for is his, uh, his stripes, but they're especially helpful when I'm drawing because they give a little bit of reference um, to where I can map out. So they're kind of lines that I can use. There's a line here, his little forehead. So look, I'm just doing shapes. Right now it still kind of looks like, I don't know, a lima bean or a heart, but we're gonna keep going into these shapes. So remember, it's first, overall shape, how does your pet fit on your surface? Maybe you use that quadrant paint plane to figure out, okay, head in the left, shoulder in the left. There he is. he's coming up on the table. It's okay, come here buddy, come on baby, come here. And then tail here. I think he knows he's being drawn. <laughs> so um, don't worry, we didn't train him to do this. This is all natural. But I am gonna move him because, <laughs> because I have to be able to see. So now I'm going into another shape. Here's his little hip. And remember, there's that, his back. His hip kind of comes out a little bit further than his back. Shoulder, little kitty paw. I know y'all think I'm a crazy cat lady, but I have fully owned it. And I think the t-shirt kind of gave it away. And I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not shy about the t-shirt. Michael gave it to me for Valentine's Day, right? I think it was Valentine's Day. It has hearts on it. So now I'm adding a few more details. Again, here's this cute little tail that kind of goes, and, and try not to give up on the drawing. So some people go, oh, a cat tail is pointy or a dog tail is pointy. It's not really pointy. There's a little fur here. So really think about these details because that's just gonna help you make this image so much more realistic if you want it to be. So it's not a perfect triangle. It kind of comes to a little, a little tip. And then his little kitty paw, so now I'm just, mark by mark, adding a few more details. There's a little downward line in the bottom of his foot. Okay, let's go back to his face because I don't want us to skip over that. I know, so I used to say to myself as an artist, I, the, I can draw everything, I can't draw cats. Once I started, and I don't know about y'all, but cats for me, I just had a hard time finding shapes. So if, if y'all remember holding your pencil, if you take in my other classes, I'm holding the pencil a little bit further away just to create a little bit more movement. When I start to go into more detail, I kind of close in. So now I'm looking at angles. But anyways, I always had a hard time drawing cats because so, many, so much of their features are covered in their fur. And this can go for dogs. This can also go for horses if you're drawing a horse or even birds with feathers. Um, try to find the shape. Don't worry about the structure underneath. Worry about the shape that you see. And even if it's a shape and they're coloring, like here, I'm, this is like a great shape here, another shape. Break it up into shapes. 
So here's his little nose, the best part about him. His little pink nose, there's that little nostril, okay. And then this is where the, so I had a pet portrait commission about two years ago and, um, and I asked Michael for feedback, my husband, and he said, you know, it looks, it looks like a great dog, but it doesn't look like their dog. So these lines matter because these are the lines that show you your pet is the pet that you know. What does this little smile look like? Their big lip, maybe they have a little birthmark on one side. But be mindful of those little lines that you see because they can really make your animal stand out. So here's another shape, his eye. It's kind of in this like jagged stripe and then it bleeds into this, this natural stripe that he has, which I love. He kind of looks a little bit like a Pokemon, um, which is cute because he's perfect. So, and then I love his little ears. These are also fun shapes. If you have, if you have a hard time drawing animal ears, um, I'm gonna make his lip a little bit more like that. Think about the shapes. So I have a, a rather straight line here and a nice curve as his ear comes back down. And then there's about, I don't know, an inch space here, a little lift. Cat ears are funny. They have that kind of extra extra ear piece that looks like I know they have amazing hearing. A little wider on the top. So there are his ears. And then let's keep going into detail. So I'm gonna come back down a little bit higher on my pencil. And feel free to get really loose here. You know your animal the best. And I'm gonna go a little bit darker. So here is his low back. And I'm using watercolor paper tonight because I know I had asked you all to get all the materials you need and if you want to color it in. I don't have markers with me. Um, I have watercolor. So that's just extra if you want to color it in. Um, you can color that in your own time. Let's look at toes. Again, just shapes. So if you have a little, what, kind of like an olive here. Well, it looks like a leaf almost. And then, so here's that leaf shape, right? And this carves in at about halfway, one toe, and then again, I'm sorry for cutting it off, but that's his back foot. And let's go into these paws. And what's great about your animal, whether they have stripes or markings or not, can those be reference points for you? So that's him. He really wants to be a bigger part of this, but little does he know that he's everything. So. Here's another shape, his little kitty paw. Just lines, all right? So we have, and there's a little negative space here where his kind of, you know how cats look like they have little rabbit feet, where that, there's a little hole here that I'm keeping for his tail to curve in. But now once you've gotten your figure down, excuse me, your animal down, you have the main shape. So let's go in with some of those marks that make them so cute. So if you don't like the harder lines, take your eraser and just kind of chop them out. See how I'm not perfectly erasing lines, I'm chopping them out. And that'll help you create those, the hair look that you're looking for to kind of break up some of these lines. So I know these animals that we have at home are little furry friends. They don't have perfect lines to tell you, okay, here's their tail, here's their foot. So chop it up a little bit. This is, and I'm erasing tonight because this isn't, a perfect, it's not a very loose line drawing. I'm trying to get a little more realistic, so I have an eraser. And I know y'all don't, not everyone has these architectural brushes, so if you have, if you can, just blow on it. But if you have an architectural brush, just go ahead and wipe it away, and that'll protect your paper. So I've chopped up the lines here so that I can go in and add a little bit of fur. And that way it kind of looks a little hairy. Jean Pierre has lines and stripes, and those are really great reference points to kind of chunk up some of these ligaments and make them look a little more real. So there are some stripes. I have another stripe here. And then go into those details. So does he, have, does he or she have little whiskers, little hairs, or other stripes that you can add? I see another stripe kind of here. Some more hair here, some wispy hair. But again, it's whole figure, animal, keep saying figure, whole animal, and then the shapes inside, the shapes that make them up. 
think about the direction of the of the stripes and that's going to help you kind of isolate some of these chunks of what makes them the animals that we love and then if you have whiskers don't forget to add those in And I think we are exactly on time. So, y'all, I know that that was a lot in 15 minutes. I'm going to save this video um, on my IGTV. Thank you, Michael. He is my uh, cameraman giving me little notes as to keep me in track of time. Um, so, remember those, those major things. Overall shape on your paper. What orientation? Shapes inside. And then connect the shapes. Shoulder, knee, what's the line connecting them? Um, and then I'm gonna post this finished piece later tonight or tomorrow when I color it in, but um, I'm hoping that this gave you an opportunity to draw your pet and um, something different to do. And let me know um, if you have any questions. You can DM me or you can ask me right now. And don't forget to repost and tag if you want a shout out or um, so I can see some of your animals because you know how much I love animals. So it's hashtag Haley from home or you can just tag me Haley Bowen Art and I'd love to see what you did from this. So thank you for tuning in. I hope it was really fun.